Right, it's time we have some serious conversations about the Spurs side and how far they can go this season because top of the league, they were absolutely fantastic today. James Madison has proved why he's probably the bargain signing of the summer. Son was fantastic yet again, but defensively, I think Spurs put in a shift because they did drop off from the 60th minute onwards when the subs came on, which is a highlight, maybe the lack of depth and all that which people touch upon. But Mickey Van Der Ven and Sergio Romero, what a centre-back pairing. Honestly, Sergio Romero today was I mean, I think this season you could argue he's been the best centre-back in the league in terms of some of the performances he's produced. Honestly, he's an absolute joke. He's <coughs> incredible. And Messi was right when he was talking about how good Sergio Romero was. And Mickey van der Ven, he's so fast as well. which He's so good. But that pairing is absolutely immense. And I want to talk about that centre-back pairing. I want to talk about James Manson. I want to talk about Ange, what he's achieved, Tottenham's strengths. I think weaknesses will be depth. And I think Spurs' success this season... <coughs> will massively depend on injuries because I think we saw when the subs came on there was a bit of a drop off but they defended so well and you know if we looked at Spurs last year and you look at them you know nine games into the season it, it's like I, I can't believe Ange just made that much of a difference in such a short period of time Ange as you can see on the screen here is <coughs> got 23 points in nine games more than any other new Premier League manager just shows how good he's been. And you've got to remember, it's not like Ange took over Man City that just won the treble and did that. Ange took over a Tottenham side that a lot of people didn't put in the top eight in their predictions and has taken them this far forward. You know, seven goals in nine games for Son. He's back to his best because he was quite poor last season. And James Madison's come in with three goals and five assists. And I do want to talk about the centre-back pairing because they were just unbelievable today. But we have to talk about Madison and Son first. The people that... Or, you know, score the goals, influence the game. And I do apologise if I keep coughing. I've got, like, long COVID or something. But I, I did a little tweet on Madison today. So I thought I'd read this out and sort of give you my thoughts on James Madison and, and how good he's been. And I, hopefully you can see that on the screen absolutely fine. So I said on James Madison, Spurs look so good going forward and they're just so exciting to watch. And I think James Madison's a significant part of that because people... All of Twitter, if you put Madison in, it's about his goals, his assists, his chances created. But James Madison is a lot more than goals, assists, chances created. It's the general influence he's had on Tottenham Hotspur in every single phase of the pitch. And I said, <coughs> not only does he have the three goals, the five assists, the most chances created in the league this season, just overtaking Trippier at 29, but he influences Tottenham Hotspur in every single phase of the pitch. He's in this eight role where he sometimes drops deep to get the ball off the centre-backs, which is something that you don't see from an eight or a 10 because of Andrew's system. It's so fluid that you sometimes see like, you know, the full-backs invert into the midfield. Everyone is kind of interchanging position, but starting in the main position is so fluid. And, you know, James Madison has the ability to get more involved in the game because he can drop deep, gets the ball off the centre-backs. And what James Madison does so well is he's got all the technical abilities needed to be a fantastic player because you can get goals, you can get assists, you can, you know, be brilliant off the ball, you can cover lots of ground, you can be hard-working. But you also need that IQ to know how to position yourself in, in a complex system like Angers and how to move in and out of position. James Madison does that. But you also need certain technical qualities in the modern game to be press resistance, to progress the ball to break lines. And if you possess all those qualities, you can be an elite player. And that's Madison off the ball, intelligence, IQ, hard working, output. He's got everything you need. And what he does, <coughs> what I think is so brilliant is he can get the ball from sort of deeper and he can execute those passes so well. You know, he can break the lines, he can progress the ball up the pitch, carry the ball up the pitch, whether that's loads of short passes, one-twos, whether that's dribbling and carrying the ball up the pitch, whether that's playing long and switching the play, which we've seen him done. He can get the ball from that defensive phase into that attacking phase as well as his general output in the final third. We always talk about Madison in the final third, how good he is in the final third, set pieces, being on the edge of the box to score the goal, you know, getting getting key key assists, chance creating. Everything he does in the final third is fantastic. Set pieces, just all round shot output. Everything he does in the final third is fantastic, but actually he influences the first phase and the second phase. He can progress the ball. His passing, his range, his ability is excellent. He's one of the most complete players. And I look, that can rise 110 million, Enzo Fernandes 105 million, completely different players. Kai Havertz 65 million, Mason Mount 55 million, Bellingham 100 million, Madison 40 million pounds. That is probably signing of the summer value bargain for money. You know, I think Sobersai has been fantastic, but when you look at uh, uh, Madison and Sobersai and you look at price, Madison for me, God, the influence he's had is unbelievable <coughs> because it's not just about oh he's you know he's made Son brilliant he's made the players around him better Madison has made the players around him better he's made this instant impact he's made Son better he's got Son back to his best and Son's ability to finish phew, fantastic Son Son is one of the most elite finishers in football but it's not just about okay I'm James Madison I make everyone else better 
I influence every phase of the pitch. It's not just I'm going to get goals and assists and if they dry up, we're going to be poor. No, no, no. I'm going to help them build up. I'm going to help progress the ball. I'm going to interchange positions with the fullback so they can avert. I'm going to do this. Everything. And today, look, 63 touches, 86 pass accuracy, you know, 38 passes completed, 16 out of 21 final third passes. That's mad. Played the ball into the final third 16 times. As I said, helps in, he can break lines in every phase of the pitch. He gets into those half spaces. He finds the space. He likes to play between the lines. He can progress through those. He can break lines. He gets Spurs up the pitch and build up. And then in the final third, boom, four key passes influencing the game. Four fouls won. Two out of three long balls completed. Two out of three dribbles completed. Can pass, can dribble, can score. Just absolutely ran the show. Absolutely fantastic player. And, and one of the things he does so well is his son. He's unlocked son because son... He's an unbelievable player on his day. And then you've got Son's statistics here. You know, again, four key passes from Son. Goal, big chance, created assist. Son Hun Hyung Min, well, however you say his name, special, special player. And those two, probably the deadliest attacking duo in the world right now, if you, you could put it like that. And, you know, there's one man that deserves a lot of credit, and that is Ange Postacoglu. And I haven't even spoken about a defence because... <clears throat> you know, Tottenham are so good. And look, the last 30 minutes, Tottenham weren't great, uh, but the defence did so well. You can see that this Tottenham side is good, but they need depth. And if they get injuries, that's when they're going to fall off. But I think they are the closest team to compete with Man City in terms of how good they are at the very best. And Data MP, which is one of my favourite Twitter accounts, go check them out. It always does like sort of statistic comparisons of things. I think it uses like AI and it's showing sort of how Tottenham last season compared to this season. So this is a comparison. The blue is Tottenham last season. Uh, the green is Tottenham this season. So last season, Tottenham were better physically in terms of their physicality, but everything else was lower. This season, Tottenham's pressing numbers are like three times higher. Their defending numbers are better. Their um, sort of counter numbers are better. Their possession is higher. Their attacking is higher. Their goals are higher. You look at just all round. And Ange has done that in nine Premier League games. Ange has done that in three months. The You know, this is my frustration with Ten Hag. I'm a Man United fan and I'm kind of frustrated with Man United's lack of style of play. And then you look at Ange coming in and you can see Ange's style of play. You can see they're stretching the width. You can see fullbacks go into a vert. You can see that the H drop deep. You can see that the, the positions are fluid <coughs> and they interchange. You can see Madison getting in the half space. You can see the wingers going out really wide, which draws the fullbacks back, which means Madison is more free on the edge of the box to be a goal threat. And you can see every single bit of the system working together. Then you see players like Romero, who we've always known is a good player, but he's just stepped up a level this season. Basuma always knew he was a good player, but he obviously, fantastic player, didn't start today. But, you know, we now have good he's been. You know, even though I actually think Richarlison had a decent game. He's not a player that I particularly rate, but I think he had a decent game. Um, you know, <coughs> Pedro Porro has really improved. The goalkeeper that they signed was sceptical about him. I said, oh, they do need a morning keeper. You know, everyone at Spurs has completely excelled and, and sort of gone up a level here and, you know, you have to give Ange a lot of credit. You know, he's brought that feel-good factor to Spurs. He's got them playing great football. He's got them getting great results. He's improving players. And in such a short period of time, to have the most points after nine games in a Premier League season of any manager that's come in new and taken over a side like Spurs, absolutely fantastic. And someone else who was fantastic today was Romero. Honestly, his performances lately have been an absolute joke, how good he is. You know, and here today, you know, look at his heat map, absolutely brilliant as well and I think with defenders you can't really look at stats you can say two clearances one interception one one tackle um he, he wasn't dribbled past at all but you know he's not going to have like 10 tackles because Spurs obviously dominate possession but you can see just generally here like two out of two ground rules one all of that stuff as well was just absolutely solid and, and what I looked for and what stood out for me is just this his ball playing ability this is this is such in the modern game of football having good ball playing centre-backs having centre-backs that are comfortable on the ball that can pass the ball that is what you want. That's why United signed Lissandra Martinez. That's why Arsenal got players like Saliba and they've brought in Jurian Tim, but who probably plays a right back. That's why John Stones is so successful at City. And you look at all these sort of modern teams, Guardiola, who City spent so much money on, they want players that are good on the ball. 124 touches, 104 passes in a game, on the ball constantly, playing the ball, makes a key pass. Absolutely fantastic as well. And then Mickey van der Ven is, is also a fantastic centre-back. He's been great this season and Again, you know, statistics are fine. Two tackles, one interceptions, five clearances. Did a good job defensively. But even even, even him himself, you know, 92% pass accuracy, 60 passes, you know, 79 touches. You know, they're so comfortable in possession. And 
And that's and that's what you want from your centre backs, you know, technical ability. And yeah, the Spurs team is, is really good. It's really impressive. I think it's time that people do have some serious conversations about them. You can call them uncomfortable conversations. You can call them what you want, but you, you have to take that Spurs side seriously. And I always like looking at sort of average positions here as well. How you know high and advanced Romero and Van der Ven were at the pitch, just highlighting how attacking they were. But that pairing, and I'm saying this as a United fan, probably one of the best. You could argue the best centre back pairing in the league this season. You know, Spurs are top of the league for a reason. Madison and Son get a lot of the talk, but you've got to talk about that centre back pairing. You've got to talk about and the system, just just how well it's worked. And I think Tottenham were absolutely brilliant today as well. Uh, 1.51 xG. I think they did drop off towards the end, but that first Tottenham eleven, fantastic. And I'm a big fan of Ange, even as a United fan. Tottenham are one of my favourite sides to watch because I like the way that. And players and, and some of their players. And to be honest, it annoys Arsenal fans that Spurs are good. And Arsenal fans, I like to annoy the most after Liverpool fans. But um, no, they're just one of those things that even if someone doesn't support Spurs or doesn't really want Spurs to win, because I'm a United fan and, you know, we can mock Spurs for not winning trophies. Like, they're one of my favourite teams to watch because the football they play and I love attacking football is so enjoyable. And, and you can see that they've got so many quality players, they've got a quality manager. and you know, depending on the backing the manager gets, depending on everything. I think, you know, this is the first time you look at Spurs and go, that trophy doubt, that's not going to last much longer. Smash your like, smash your subscribe. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye.